Hello guys and welcome to another video. So in this one I want to talk about why I consistently lost money for two years in Forex before I actually got consistently profitable. So I'm going to share with you 12 tips that you can apply so that you don't have to go through the same thing so that your journey to consistency is much shorter and that you can avoid some of these bad things. Okay, so first advice from me is there is no quick fix for your trading. So if you think that you can watch a couple of videos, maybe this one and some other, work on your trading for a couple of weeks, a month, two months and reach consistency, it's not gonna work like that. So there is no quick and easy fix. Trading takes a long time to learn. But also if you follow bad advice, if you apply bad advice, you can extend the time that it takes for you to reach consistency. So instead of it taking, let's say a year or year and a half, you can take three years, you can take even five years before you reach consistency. So it's definitely worth listening to consistently profitable traders and implementing their advice. My second advice is treat trading like a business. So trading is not a hobby. If you treat it like a hobby or some side business that you're not that just interested in that you work on maybe for two hours every week, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna reach consistency. You will never make money in Forex. So trading is a business and it should be treated like a business. This was one of the problems that I had in the beginning. So I was not fully serious about trading. I was not fully committed. It was something that was very interesting to me. And I did some research on the side, maybe on the weekend, I would do some research, maybe a little bit of backtesting, maybe watch a couple of YouTube videos, maybe look into some free courses. But basically I was just doing it for a couple of hours every single week, not really committing. And with that approach, I could not achieve anything. So I don't think I was trading that time. I did not have any money. I didn't have a trading account. That's fortunate. But if I was trading, I would have lost a lot of money with that approach. Make sure if you do decide to become a trader, you take it seriously, you treat trading like a business and you work on your business for a couple of hours every single day or at least five days per week. Number three. Okay, so you decided to treat trading as a business. You decided to take it seriously. Now you need to find a mentor or a community to actually learn to trade. This is a very key point of your journey. I mean, the community you pick or the strategy you pick or the mentor you pick, it's going to stick with you for a couple of years. Again, it takes a couple of years to learn to trade. So any sort of a strategy, mentor, community, make sure you do extensive research. So go on Trustpilot, go on YouTube, go on the forums, uh, go on the internet and see what's out there, see what works for you, see which strategies you like. Look for, of course, proof of MetaTrader payouts, look for prop firm payouts, talk to the traders that are in the community or that are trading the same strategy, see what they have to say, see what kind of percentage they are making. So not, not just the mentor, but also see what the students have to say. And and I definitely struggled with this in the beginning. I did make a couple of bad choices. So the first trading community I joined was a complete scam. So that was a total scam and I definitely lost all of the money I put in. Like I paid for one year of subscription. It was some sort of a crypto trading community where you had one mentor who was trading Bitcoin and then he was teaching us, also giving us some signals. Basically, he did an ex exit scam and a couple of months later, it was all gone. So that was money lost. I did not learn absolutely anything except how to avoid crypto scammers. So I learned that. Second community was forexsignals.com. Very good community, but just not serious enough. I mean, they do take in a lot of clients. They do take in a lot of people who want to learn to trade, but they don't really teach you in much detail. So if you want to really learn how to trade, if you want to learn how to backtest, have some edges, have like a step-by-step -step strategy that you learn, I don't think forexsignals.com is for you. I would say forexsignals.com is more like for people who want to treat trading as a, as a hobby and it's kind of their interest on the side. So I learned a lot about, let's say, risk management, psychology, a little bit about the technicals in that community, but it was not enough for me to reach consistency. I finally had some luck with the third community that I joined, which was Guerrilla Trading. There, there was a proven strategy. Everyone was trading the same strategy. Everyone was learning the same strategy, which made it a lot easier to, to learn, to talk to someone, to backtest, to compare your results, to see what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong, to compare to the, to the mentor. And that is where I actually learned to trade. So yeah, I lost like a year and a half or maybe even two years just by going around communities and not really learning much, just basically treating trading as a hobby and never really digging into it. So really, really important, do your research when you're joining a trading community, 
see if their students are actually making money, if they're making profits, if they're making consistent profits. Look online, look on Trustpilot, and I'm sure you will find a trading community that suits you and a strategy that you like as well. Advice number four I have for you is that don't think that trading is 90% psychology, at least in the beginning. So that was one of the major issues that I had. I read all of these books, I, I listened to all of these mentors, all of these professional traders, all of them said, look, trading is 90% psychology, it is the most important thing. Yes, I would agree, but when you're just a beginner, psychology won't take you anywhere. So you can have good psychology from the beginning, but if you don't have a proven strategy, if you have not done your back testing, if you don't have a proven edge, psychology won't help you. So in the beginning, your first goal is to work on your technicals. Find a strategy, back to the strategy, develop your edge, and then trade it live for a couple of months or a year so that you fully believe in the strategy and you, and you have the confidence to trade your edge. So I did lose some time because of that as well. I did not really want to work fully work on my technicals. I kind of thought, well, if I just fixed my, fixed my psychology, I will start making profits, but I had no, let's say, viable strategy. The strategy I was trading was not that good. I did not know anything about my edge. And that was one of the wrong turns I took. Basically, I thought if trading is 90% psychology, let me just work on my psychology. Well, that's the wrong way to go. So when you're just a beginner, work on your technicals, master the technicals, and then work on psychology. Once you master the technicals, you will actually see that psychology, yes, trading is 90% psychology, and it is the hardest part of trading. So technicals, I mean, they, they are hard to learn but psychology is even tougher. Number five, do extensive backtesting. One of the issues I had, I did not backtest enough. So you need to thoroughly backtest. How much? Well, at least the last three to five years, not just one run on one pair, but two runs, three runs. So yeah, a lot of backtesting. It should take you a couple of months to fully research one currency pair. What I did wrong in the beginning, well, I did not take it seriously. Again, I skipped backtesting. I did a little bit of backtesting, not enough. I kind of rushed the backtesting process because I wanted to, to move on from the technicals to actually trading live or trading demo or working on my psychology. So definitely don't do it. It's a key, it's, it's such a key step to your trading progression that you do extensive backtesting and you need to prove to yourself that your strategy actually works and that you can make money in the live market. So I know a lot of people skip this step. I mean, they don't skip it, but they do a little bit of backtesting. They don't get the thorough data and then they just move on. The problem with that is if you cannot make money in your backtesting, you won't make money in live trading. So if in your backtesting, you're making like 5% per year, you will make 0% per year in your live trading. You will even be in a negative. So unless you're making 30, 40, 50, 60% at least in your backtesting in one year, you should not be live trading, okay? If you can make money in backtesting, then go ahead and start trading demo or start trading live. But you need to first prove to yourself that what you trade actually works and that you can make money. Number six is develop your edge. So after I did the thorough backtesting, I thought I was done. I thought that was it for the research that I needed to do. And again, I struggled. So it took me a couple of months to see what was going wrong. I mean, I was trading live, but I was not making any profits. I was taking a lot of unnecessary losses. And that is because I did not really have a developed edge. I kind of did my backtesting and then memorized all of the trades from my backtesting. So each time I would do a rerun on one pair, I would remember exactly where the trades are and when to take them. So I kind of remember all of the patterns, which is which is OK. So it's good to remember patterns. But again, that's not really a good backtesting. Then if you remember exact date, time and the look of the trade that you're taking in your backtesting. So develop your edge. What do I mean by that? Well, go further into your strategy and write down exactly what your edge is. So write down exactly why a trade works or why it does not work. One thing you can do, one thing that helped me a lot is don't focus on the entry. So don't be too zoomed in. Actually focus on the prior price action. And when I actually zoomed out and not just looked at the entry, which I memorized exactly how the good entries looked, but that was not enough for, for live trading. So you need to zoom out, look at the bigger picture, look at all of the price action, look at the prior price action. What I found is what works for me is a trending market. What works for me is ascending or descending channels. 
So I need to focus on the formations that form before my actual entry. And that was a big breakthrough moment for me. That was when I actually discovered what my edge is. Again, my edge, I have it written down. Let me give you an example. My edge is when, you, when I see a trending market, I look for entries. When I see an ascending channel, I look for a reversal and then a trend to the downside, basically, then I sell. Or when I see a V reversal, I know that usually you get a small range and then price continues to the upside. So those are some of the patterns that I personally look that I know, for example, when I see a V reversal, it is more likely price will go up than it is to go down. So I know any entries that form to the upside or on the uptrend are very, very high probability to continue. And that is exactly what you need to do after you do thorough back testing, write down exactly what is your edge and then do more research if you need to. If you cannot write down what your edge is, if you don't know exactly which types of patterns or which types of par price action you look for, well, then you're gonna struggle in the live markets and you're gonna, again, lose a couple of months, maybe even a year. I know I lost a couple of months and if only if I just focused on what my edge is, and wrote down exactly what my edges, I would have understood that I have not fully researched the strategy or my edge. Okay, let's get to number seven. Now, this is a common saying uh, between traders and the saying is, it's not the strategy, it's you. And I struggle with this a lot. So there were many, many times where I actually doubted the strategy and doubted if it works. I doubted if this strategy can, can even make money. Why? Well, because I was in a drawdown. I was taking unnecessary losses. I was not patient enough to wait for those high probability 10 out of 10 A plus setups, which in most cases turned out to be nice big winners. I would actually say most of these strategies that are taught online actually do work if they are conservative, of course, if they are not telling you that you can make 500 or 1000 percent in in let's say three or four months so if they are conservative like 60 80 100 percent per year i think most of them actually work but it is up to you to learn how to trade them and actually develop your trading edge so anytime you start doubting the strategy maybe you're in a drawdown maybe you're taking some losses maybe you had three months of zero winners Go to your back testing, see if the results match, and then you will know, are you on the right track or are you not doing something correctly? Again, most of the time, it's not actually the strategy that is not working. It is you that are, are either doing something wrong or you are being impatient. Number eight is you won't make money every single month. So yeah, I know a lot of people think that when they actually learn to trade that they're gonna be making money every single month and that they're gonna be able to cover all of their bills every single month. I know I had exactly this sort of a mindset. Now it's a bit different if you're a scalper, a day trader or a swing trader. So I am a swing trader and I can only speak for swing trading. For swing trading, not all months will be positive. Maybe even a quarter can be negative. So you can have three months where you're only negative. I know, for example, on social media, all of these people, all of these influencers, they're only showing you the profits and you're seeing, okay, this guy's making one grand, two grand, three grand every single week. Well, it's not like that in real trading. Those people only want your money for, of course, the, the courses or maybe broker or something like that. They are not really trading. The reality of trading is what I just said, not every single month will be profitable. And don't be surprised if you have two or three months where you're negative. How can you know how many months can you be negative? Well, do your back testing. Back test the last 10 years, last 15 years, and then you will see the longest periods of drawdown that you can have. Once you understand this, and once you get that trading is a long-term game, and that we look at trading on a yearly basis, if every single year you're profitable, then that is a great, great result. Well, then you will have a much easier time actually executing trades. Number nine is trading should not be your main source of income. And I understood this part once I understood that I won't be making money every single month. I know when I just came to trading, I thought that trading could be my main source of income and that I could cover all of my bills just from trading. And every single month, of course, I will be profitable. It's not like that. I would not recommend anyone to quit their job, even once they are consistently profitable. I would actually believe that most successful traders, or maybe you can say most, most successful swing traders, do have some other sources of income to cover their monthly bills. And a year ago, I definitely wanted to make trading my main source of income, and I struggled. I forced trades, I wanted a winning trade, I was getting impatient, I was thinking that the strategy is not working, why am I not making money, bills are coming, stuff like that. Once I changed my approach, once I got some other streams of income, such as YouTube, ads, partnerships, uh, my mentorship as well, well then it got 
a lot easier. It took the pressure of needing to make money. And that's when you will become a better trader. If there is no need for you to make money, then the pressure is off of forcing trades and you will be content. If you're negative for the month, that's okay. Maybe next month will be better. It will be also much easier to get in the zone of trading. You will be at peace and the psychological impact of trading will be much less. Number 10 is don't believe anything you see on social media. The more I'm in this industry, I can notice scammers and fake traders. I would actually say like 95% of what you see out there on Twitter, Instagram, even YouTube is fake scrap and this pure marketing so if you are following someone that is a trading influencer or an educator or a mentor or anything like that make sure that they are telling you about realistic results so make sure they are not telling you how you can get rich quickly with trading what are realistic results well it's like 40 percent 60 percent maybe okay 80 percent profit per year and also remember so the life that you see that these the traders are living online uh let's say staying at mansions driving around in fancy cars uh, going on very expensive trips well that is mostly funded through courses now there's nothing wrong with that if the mentor is actually a quality mentor and a quality educator and actually knows how to trade but just know that with only trading money it's going to be very tough to achieve that sort of a life at least in the beginning maybe after like six seven eight 10 years, yes, you can get to that stage, but in your first two to three years, you cannot get rich quickly. So my advice is just cut out as much bullshit as you can, focus on only the people that you trust. I would also focus on only following the YouTube platform, to be honest. The most trustworthy traders are located on YouTube and most of the scammers are actually located on Instagram. This takes us to number 11, which is you need to have realistic expectations in trading. I know most of you, me included, started to trade because we wanted to get rich quickly. We were seeing all of these influencers riding around, as I said, fancy cars, fancy hotels, trips, this and that, planes. It's very cool but it's not realistic. So most of their income comes from marketing and selling courses. Trading income is gonna be much, much lower, especially in your beginning stages. Well, I would say in your first year, you're gonna be losing money, maybe break even towards the end of the year. Second year, you may make a bit of profits, like 8%, 10%, 15%. Third year, you may start making like 40, 60, maybe even 80% if you're really good. But I would say 40 to, to 60% is realistic for your third year year and then you can maybe work in your strategy a bit more refine your edge and in your fourth year you can start making 80 100 maybe even more to be honest 40 to 60 percent per year that should be enough i mean most hedge funds are making what eight or ten percent per year so by making 40 to 60 percent per year that is a really really good result especially if you get some large capital what you can then do is you can do prop firms you can do private capital you can do darwin x start building a track record attract some investors and let's say you have 1 million in funding or 1 million in your trading account 40 to 60 percent of that is like 400 to 600 thousand dollars and that is a huge income so it's not about making 200 300 500 percent per year it's about having a big capital having a good track record and making steady percentage every single year and also i struggled with this as well so i thought that making 200 300 500 percent per year is completely realistic that you can make this sort of percentage every single year and we all know that that is not True. It definitely impacted my trading as well because once I started to trade live, I was not getting those results. So I was getting maybe a couple of percent profit in one month, next month, break even, month after that, a bit of a loss. And in the end, like at the end of the year, I would make like maybe 10 to 12 percent per year and I would be disappointed. I would be sad because I expected to make like 100, 200, 300 percent per year. So the sooner you understand the realistic expectations in trading and how much you can actually make, the faster you will progress and you will be a much better trader so number 12 and the final thing i want to say is if you persist you will succeed trading has many many tough periods many many drawdown periods you will be struggling you will be thinking that the strategy doesn't work you'll be taking only losses no winners you may start doing prop firms and then a prop firm disappears or you don't get a payout or they screw you over so trading is really really hard especially in those beginning stages in your like first and second year when you're just starting to learn to trade and you don't really know, is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? At some points in my trading journey, I was definitely thinking this whole Forex thing is a scam. All of these people are marketers and it is impossible to extract money from the markets. So trading is extremely tough on your psychology. That's why most people quit. 
But if you persist, like all of the OG traders say, if you persist, if you get through those bad periods, you will eventually succeed and you will reach consistency. So if you're just beginning your trading journey or in, you're in your first year, second year, make sure you don't stop. Make sure you persist and follow the advice that I talked about in this video. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of struggle. If you want to learn to trade, I do have a 12 week mentorship program. I also have one on one coaching calls. All of the links will be in the description of this video. I have a website. Make sure you check it out. I also have a lot of free content on my channel. Make sure you check that out as well. So like this video, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one.